on the bench tonight I have a Panasonic the TH50PZ750 plasma 50 inch plasma TV this one's in for repair the complaint on it is it shut off with five blinks so I don't even want to power this thing up until I get the back off it because uh, I'm afraid it's probably going to be bad grounds and I don't want to risk blowing anything up if it's not already blown up so before I do anything I'm going to pull back off this thing this set's going to be filthy inside this brown fuzz you see all over the back of the set it's going to be all over the inside well that's from cigarette smoke this is owned by a smoker so we know this set's going to probably be pretty gross inside it's one of the things that I really despised when I was in the repair business was uh, working on a TV that was owned by smokers. It was just one of the grossest things to, to have to deal with because everything inside is covered. Anyway, I got about 40 screws to remove here so let's get the back off this thing and I'm going to check some key grounding uh, points because Panasonic had a nasty habit of uh, using multiple ground screws instead of ground instead of using a common ground they used a series of independent grounds and they used the chassis to provide continuity from one ground to another and the ground screws had a tendency to work their way loose and uh, fail so I'm just going to get the back off this thing and we'll check that out and make sure everything's tight before we try firing the setup and see if it actually does anything. Okay, the screws are out in the back. Back cover lifts off this thing like that. And it's dangerous. It's like a razor. It slices your hand open. It's unbelievable how sharp that metal is. If you pull back off one of these TVs, get on the extra thick gloves, because I barely touched that thing. I just sliced my hand open pretty good on it. Oh, my cat has decided to uh, investigate. Cat's coming in here to see what's going on. I had to raid the first aid cabinet here to... Uh, patch myself up that was a pretty good deep cut from that um, top cover you would think that uh, for what they charged for these TVs back when they made them they would have uh, at least uh, you know run a grinder around that thing to take the sharp edges off it but man that thing's sharp it's like a razor right along the edge um, now that the cat's out of the way take a look at this thing this is a beast this is before they started making these things a little bit easier to work on. This is this is as bad as the uh, the other one that I've got over here, the 42 inch, except for this one's a high definition set. So it's got a lot more. Here's all of our buffer chips down here. Right, so this is a 1080p. You've got uh, 10 buffer chips. That's for your, uh, your Y uh, buffer, Y drivers. This is the the Y sustain board here, this big board, you've got an upper and a lower buffer, Y sustain board. This is the first set I've seen that's actually had a drivers on, looks like they've got them on both the top and the bottom of the panel. I see um, a C board along the bottom here to drive the panel, but look on the top. There's more tabs on the top on this. Med free. So we've got we've got tabs along the top and along the bottom on this panel. So I have a this would be a full HD, and I think probably my my 63 inch Samsung is probably the same. I haven't opened it up, but um, your standard spec for 1080 is 1920 pixels this way up and down by 1080 this way but you have to remember that there's there's three 
sets of subpixels. You've got red, green, and blue. And the full 1080 panels had 1920 red, 1920 green, and blue. So it was 1920 times 3 times your 1080. And to get that many registers, it looks like they've put, they've put uh, tabs on both the top and the bottom of this. Onto the right side here, this is the common mode driver. Look at all those transistors and diodes here on these heat sinks. And you've got the common mode tabs. These ones here are for the what Samsung call the X main. LG call it the Z buffer. Panasonic call it the SS board. It's your common mode driver. Got two massive power supplies on this thing. As if one power supply is not enough. We have two main power supplies. And we've got our digital board over here. There's our digital processing here. And I'm not going to go through all that on this. This, this TV apparently uh, was working and it just shut down. And had I think the owner said it had five uh, codes. But I'm not going to plug it in until I verify that it is nothing caused by bad ground. So let's check the ground screws and see if they're tight. They're not. They're loose. They're all, they're all loose. Every one of them. So that may be the problem with this set. It's a ground screw. It's got a metal tab under it and it's loose. So I'm just going to tighten all these screws down before I even power the setup because if there's no parts that are blown yet, I don't want to run the risk that I'm going to blow them up by powering it up. It might be that the set's already blown. Well, that was really loose. Holy smoke. It might be that there's already parts that have failed, but maybe not. When uh, the guy that owned it told me it started shutting down on him, I told him, unplug it and don't run it. So it, we may get lucky with this. Take a look at these screws over here and see if these ones are loose. Yep. I'm getting a good... Uh, half a turn on these screws. This is a ground screw here. They're all loose, every one of them. Now the big problem that Panasonic had, that one's tight, but here's a ground screw here, and that one's loose. Another ground screw up here. We can tell the ground screws because they have metal tabs on them. Any of the ones that have got metal tabs on them are going to be grounding screws. Screw there, there's another one over here. See, these are all loose. The biggest problem with the Panasonics was the way that they grounded the boards. Rather than have a common ground that grounded the entire board around its perimeter. What Panasonic relied on was that they relied on, they would have multiple grounds. They would have a ground here and they'd have a ground over here and they were, they were, they were physically isolated from each other. So what, what connected those two grounds together was the metal chassis. So what happens is over time with heating and cooling and heating and cooling, the ground screws work their way loose and now we have a potential difference between one ground and the next. 
And if that's not bad enough, the, the big problem that happens is if you get arcing, if you get current flow between the two loose ground screws, you'll end up with arcing, and arcing is going to cause or can cause component failure. So before I power this up, I want to make sure that all the screws are tight. Then we'll stand it up and turn it on and see if it, if it does anything. So as I continue to tighten up all of these ground screws, and they're all loose, some more than others. A lot of these screws I'm getting a good half to three quarter turn just to tighten them up. Now obviously this is more critical on the high power boards than on low power boards, like digital boards and stuff. A little more critical on the sustain boards. Anything that's got a lot of current. Okay, I think I got them all. I think I got most of them tight now. Uh, we'll check these ones here out on the digital board as well. Oh yeah, those ones are loose too. It's just ridiculous. Now this might be, part of the problem might be dissimilar metals, right, depending on what they made the screws out of. I know that on some of the TVs that had a, a service kit, they actually supplied new screws and each screw had a lock washer when you ordered the service kit. So Panasonic did find that they had a big problem with these screws coming loose. And I'm sure that the loose ground screws caused an early death to a lot of these TVs. This is a very high quality television. I mean, look at the quality of the parts on this thing. I mean, I mean just look at the capacitors. All, all Nikicon caps. There's no bulging tops on any of these. This is first rate. You know, this is probably one of the best television sets ever made. Was these Panasonic plasmas. They were just fantastic TVs. It's just beautiful. Like, tell me, have you ever seen manufacturing like this? I mean, it just, it's just incredible. The, 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 the quality of the construction of these things, of the, the boards, it's just impeccable, the quality. It, you know, it, it's beautiful. I mean, look at, the, look at the soldering on there. It's, you know, but the, the weak link on these televisions was the bloody ground screws. That was the weak link on these Panasonic TVs. And if everybody that had one, the first time the set shut down or flickered or flashed or whatever they did before they died, if they called their service man up and said, hey, my Panasonic TV is flickering, and the service guy said, yeah, okay, we know what that is, get a service call and uh, we'll fix it, you know, pay the 150 bucks or whatever the service call would be to have a technician come out and tighten everything down before something blows up. These TVs would be, you know, they'd never fail. I've got a couple Panasonics myself. Actually, I've got uh, three. I've got this one, my shop set. I have a 42 in my studio, and I have a 50 that I repaired that I'm just keeping. It'll get put in service someday when another TV burns out. I'm just, just going to store it because it's a great TV. Um, but yeah, no, these things were fantastic. You know, top quality parts, very good uh, manufacturing of the boards, and then they sent them to Mexico to assemble them. And that, I think, is where the problem happened. Is you know they just they didn't torque them down or they didn't put lock washers on, and uh, that's where we have the problem. Okay, I think I've got all the screws tight. I'm going to stand this pig up. That's going to be fun. This thing weighs a bloody ton. Let's stand this pig up and uh, try it out. Okay, I've got this beast standing up. I've got my DVD going, ready to go. I'm going to plug the HDMI cable into the back here and plug in the power. I heard a click. Let's uh, go around front and turn this thing on and see if it works and see if it does anything. What the hell is that cat doing? Cats getting into things shouldn't get into. Move my move my prop camera out of the way. Put my real camera in place of it. There's my prop camera. Get that out of the way. Get the other one around there so I can take some pictures of this thing and 
see if it actually does anything. Okay, TV is, uh, gotta grab a remote control for this thing. Power on and see if this thing actually will do anything. Okay, first time setup. Looks like it's uh, looks like it's working. How do I get out of that? Oh, cat's gonna fall down. That's all I need is a cat to pull the TV over. Looks to be fixed. Looks to be working. Beautiful. Wonderful picture on this thing. I don't want to, uh, hopefully, hopefully I'm not gonna get in any trouble for showing this. This is actually a video that's on YouTube, so hopefully I'll be able to use this as a demonstration without it creating any problems for me but as you can see there's my other one my standard definition one looks fantastic too but this one looks better very good picture on this thing uh, that's it say when I got the TV it wasn't turning on it was uh, completely dead it was just going into five flashes I think he said five uh, flashes of the uh, power light it wasn't turning on and uh, all I've done is just tighten down the grounds. Every single one of those ground screws was bad. I'm not going to leave this TV sitting up here because it's going to fall over. I'm not careful. I'm kind of it's kind of propped up here. But uh, there you go. It's uh, it's fixed. Hope you enjoyed this one. If you see these any of these Panasonics, check the grounds, especially before they blow up. If they blow up, then you're going to have to change parts in them. But uh, if you get them before they they die completely, tighten down the grounds. It'll fix them nine times out of ten. And if you ever wondered what really bad burn-in looks like on a CRT, well, that's about as bad as I think you're ever gonna see. You can clearly see the record indicator, which was a red square with a white R for record on the old DVR, and you can actually clearly see on the bottom right corner of the screen, you can clearly see my uh, back doors and the window. That was that's permanently etched into that tube that took uh, I think about six years of um, of running to do that and it, and it wasn't running 24 hours a day this the set was on during the day and it was off at night so it took about six years of uh, operation to burn that tube that bad now that tube just sits up in my uh, it now just sits up in my workshop and I just use it basically to uh, monitor my cameras and monitor my uh, my clock, which now just streams out a little app. Okay, hope you enjoyed this video. We'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now.